Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Solar Impulse 2 reaches Spain, the Terrafugia flying car gets help from the FAA, world's largest airplane coming closer to flight. I'm Brie Cross, it's June 23rd, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The flight of the Solar Impulse 2 around the world has had its challenges, and the crossing of the Atlantic Ocean was planned with the utmost care because of this final long distance over water leg of the journey. As it turned out, things went so well that the aircraft arrived in Sevilla, Spain ahead of the original planned schedule. At one point during the flight, pilot Bertrand Picard blogged that he felt quite tired at the 44-hour point and that he had had to cope with some turbulence over the Azores Islands. Later in the flight, he spent some time chatting with Sir Richard Branson. As Picard approached Sevilla, he had the pleasure of being escorted ever so briefly by a formation of Spanish Eurofighter jets. The flyby had been planned several hours earlier, and in the communications between Mission Control and Picard, it was obvious he was looking forward to the brief welcoming air show. Overall, the trip to Spain turned out very well. We will update you with more information about the departing time from Sevilla and the plans for the continuation of the flight to the starting point in Abu Dhabi. We may be getting closer to a Terrafugia flying car as the FAA has approved a petition for the exemption filed in 2014, allowing a vehicle in the transition street legal airplane configuration to be certified as a light sport aircraft with a maximum takeoff weight of 1,800 pounds. Terrafugia says the 1,800 pound weight is necessary to accommodate structures and systems directly related to the unique safety features of the vehicle. In support of its petition, Terrafugia quantified the potential safety benefits of the transition. They say that because it is stronger and more crash resistant as an automobile, it makes a safer airplane. They also claimed an advantage of being able to land and drive if weather becomes unflyable. In addition to the increase in takeoff weight, a corresponding stall speed increase was also granted to accommodate size constraints imposed by road operation. After the break, Strato launch airplane nearing completion. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The Strato launch airplane designed to carry rockets that will deliver satellites to orbit is near completion, according to Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen, who is bankrolling the effort. The twin fuselage airplane uses engines, avionics, landing gear, and other components from a pair of Boeing 747s as the airframe foundation, but it was built by Northrop Grumman Scale Composites located in Mojave, California. The goal of the company is to be able to deliver payloads similar to those carried by SpaceX's Falcon 9 booster into precise orbits but using a runway rather than a launch pad. That helps eliminate launch range scheduling and weather delays, according to Allen. Writing on LinkedIn, Allen says that Strato Launch has a 300-foot wingspan, is powered by six 747 engines, and is designed to carry payloads up to 550,000 pounds. He says the aircraft's 1,000 nautical mile flight radius gives it access to a variety of runways, making it much more flexible for potential launch customers. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. We have something really cool to announce. Now anyone who attends EAA AirVenture 2016 has the opportunity to partner with us in a program we are calling Hashtag Osh 16 Coolest. Here's the deal, despite the fact that we'll be staffed to the hilt at AirVenture this year, sometimes we just don't see all the coolest things that are out there. Here's where anyone at Oshkosh can partner with us by tweeting something you see or hear or feel that you think is just the coolest thing. 
Including a picture or a video with your tweet is even better. When we say the coolest thing ever, we mean anything. Not just some big bad airplane. It might be something as simple as a home-built airplane with some little detail that made you say, oh, that's so cool. Or it could be a visiting airplane that you've never seen before. Or it might be something on a vendor's table you just can't live without. It could also be a person or an event. No matter what it is, big or small, if your this is so cool light comes on, remember hashtag Osh16 coolest. When we receive an Osh16 coolest tweet, whatever or whoever it is about, we'll receive a special recognition from ANN so everyone knows this is so cool. Partner with us and join the fun. After these messages, AMA appreciates FAA UAV rules. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Executive Director of the Academy of Model Aeronautics says the FAA's Part 107 rule released Tuesday will be highly beneficial to the SUAS industry. Dave Mathewson said, quote, We look forward to seeing widespread commercial and civil operation of unmanned aircraft take flight. In a document published in the Federal Register, the FAA has affirmed that the city of Charlotte, North Carolina is the controlling entity for Charlotte Douglas International Airport. The city and the state have been battling over control of the airport since 2013. Canada has posted an astronaut help wanted sign. The Canadian Space Agency is seeking the next generation of space explorers to pave the way for potential future space missions. Applications are being accepted through August 15th. The Civil Aviation Authority in the UK is looking into fees charged by airlines on top of base fees to be sure they are presented in an open and clear way. The probe will be extended to all airlines that sell tickets in the UK. The next SpaceX Commercial Cargo Resupply Services mission for NASA to the International Space Station now is targeted for launch no later than Monday, July 18th. This will be SpaceX's ninth mission to carry supplies to the space station. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Here's a positive aviation story that has made it to the mainstream media, and it should. In the history of aviation, there have been outstanding examples of aviators and airplanes making a difference between life and death. Such has been the case with the recent rescue of a medical patient at the South Pole. A Twin Otter airplane landed Tuesday in one of the harshest environments and under some of the most difficult conditions on the planet. The air temperature at the South Pole on Tuesday morning was reportedly minus 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The flight from Rothera, a British Antarctic survey station on the Antarctic Peninsula, to the pole is about 1,500 miles and took nine hours according to a report from Fox News. The crew reportedly was scheduled to rest at the pole for 10 hours before attempting the return flight. Our congratulations to the crew and to the splendid airplane originally designed and built by de Havilland of Canada, now being produced by the Viking Aircraft Company. The incredible capabilities of the Twin Otter have once again been proven. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.